Your name, sir, is Mike Africa from the MOVE organization. Now, I want to point out, I got nine MOVE people sitting in prison right now doing 30 to 100 years for a crime they ain't commit, including my mother and my father. We got serious work to do. We ain't out here talking just to be talking. We putting out information. What's the protest originally about? I mean, what were you protesting for? For the month, release of my mother and my father, and Mumia Abu Jamal, and Lena Peltier, and Russell Schultz, and all the rest of the political prisoners. My name is Russell Schultz III. I'm the son of U.S. held political prisoner Russell Maroon Schultz, and I'm honored to be on this platform educating you and giving you the liberation education about running down the walls. Running down the walls is a yearly marathon that happens to support um, prisoners in general, but specifically political prisoners, and basically it's a health initiative combined with a political initiative to educate folks around people who have fought against police brutality and fought against injustice and are still incarcerated since 1971. So this is what Running Down the Walls is all about. ABC helps put it together, Anarchist Black Cross, they have a federation that donates money and a war chest that gives to the commissary of those prisoners who were freedom fighters. So I encourage you to come out one year and run down the walls for Maroon, for Mumia, for the political prisoners, for your family members, because we're open and we always allow the space for not just political prisoners, but for elderly prisoners, for female prisoners, for trans prisoners, for anybody who's incarcerated unjustly. That's running down the walls. And my dad is Russell Maroon Schultz. On the move. My name is Mike Africa Jr. We're here today with the running down the walls from Russell Maroon Schultz. These are my parents, Mike and Debbie Africa. Uh, today was the first day that uh, all of the surviving Move 9 members were in one place at one time. All here from Maroon. I'm Mike Africa Sr. And Maroon is a well-deserved uh, brother to fight for. You know, he's, uh, he's been in struggle a long time. He does things very unselfishly for other people. He does it, uh, his case was about that. And then once he was in prison, he continued that uh, activism in jail, you know, non-violently, consistently. And uh, he's been on the forefront of a lot of things, man. And we wholeheartedly support his release. You know, the whole show's family embodies you know, what he was about, you know, they're all, you know, and they're all giving, they're all um, support, you know, all the other brothers and sisters that are going through the same thing. So we want to do all we can for that effort. When we entered prison in 1987, at the height of the crack cocaine era, we were social pariahs in our community. We were predators in our community. But when we entered the walls, we came in contact with some buried freedom fighters, human rights champions, and they transformed us, they changed us. And one of the first ingredients to our transformation was in our physical fitness. They taught us that this was the first act of self-love and self-care. They saw that we had something in us that was worth investing their time and their energy in. And they sowed seeds of change in us. They gave us things to read, the African origin of civilization, Shake at the Diop, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams, John G. Jackson's Introduction of Black Civilization, Asada, they deepened our politics and they taught us that we were enemies of our community and we were pointing the gun at the wrong, at the wrong targets. And they taught us that it wasn't about the gun that it was about developing this. And it's that type of mind that we have right now languishing, battling third of uh, uh, stage four cancer. Right, Russell Maroon shows. We can't let him go out like that, y'all. We can't let him go out like that. And they were selling a book called Maroon, The Implacable. There was a chapter in this book that I had never even heard a revolutionary say. Respect your mother. Stop hating women. He talked about how black women leadership have been erased from the movement and how in our desire to get power, we had diminished the leadership of Asada Shakur, of a Angela Davis, of a Kathleen Cleaver, of a Elaine Brown. We had diminished their leadership.
leadership. And it cost us. We did not emulate patriarchy and expect a, a better result. We did not emulate capitalism and expect a better result. We did not emulate rent culture and expect a different result. I never heard a revolutionary, let alone somebody who was doing time for the movement, speak on such a thing. And it let me know that I had work to do. I started to gravitate toward Maroon as a father figure, understanding what he was feeding me was making me a better person because see the state taught me everything I needed to know about violence and how to harm people, right? Growing up in the 80s with the drug wars, growing up watching Ronald Reagan, the United States military, I understood violence. I understood the economy of force. That's something I learned very young in the schoolyard. So I didn't need Russell Maroon Schultz, Joseph Jojo Bones and them to show me that the state grew me on that. What they showed me how to be was a responsible human I went to prison thinking I represented my community, that I was a defender of my community, but the people I was harming was from my community. That's one of the first things Maroon and JoJo told us was like, listen, you ain't in here defending your, for defending your, in your neighborhood, you in here for some nut shit. And that really hit me deep, but I had to go back to my cell and really sit with that because there was, a, there was something that was a distinguishing factor between me and them. I harmed my community. They harmed the people that was harming our community, okay? When Frank Rizzo boasted that the Philadelphia Police Department could invade Cuba, he then sicked that same police department on our community. And these political prisoners are the ones that responded to that invasion, right? So they, they, they didn't go looking for trouble. Trouble came to them and they dealt with it. If the city does try to come in here and get you out, what are you going to do? We're going to do what's necessary, man. What is that? But first, understand why he's coming in here. What are you going to do? All right. We're going to do what's necessary. What is that? The strategy of John Africa. What is that? Our only defense. What is that? The strategy of John Africa. You aren't telling me anything. You're just saying the strategy hey, of John I wouldn't tell my strategy to you. <laughs> I want to concentrate on the plight, of, the plight of a lot of women that's in prison. Because a lot of times we don't talk about females in prison. We talk about when we move at Mumia, Mall, Ma, that's good. But there's a whole lot of women in prison, it's not just men. Uh, and a lot of women don't get the support that the men get. Because we're living in this, we still, although we're supposed to be conscious people, revolutionary people, we still are brainwashed, we still have some brainwashed and some, some conditioning on us that we got to get out of. Alright, and no matter how sharp we are, how revolutionary we sound, how militant we sound, we got to do something for our women. We got to help our women. It ain't just about the men. I want people to commit themselves to action. Because sitting here talking the way we're talking and going over issues that we know about, it's like going to a party, it's like getting high. We go home like we just got high. I don't want us to just be, I don't want to be on no revolutionary high on the trip. I want us to do something. We got to stop being so reactionary. Uh, we can't react to what they're doing. We got to come up with active plans now, uh, tactics that's going to work. Uh, and we'll worry about strategy later. But for now, let's use tactics that we know that's going to work. Uh, some human collectiveness that, that all of us can share with each other.